Okay, and we're on Mr. Ridley's RMT revision number seven. And in this uh, clip, we're looking at hand tools. Measuring tools. The first tools we're going to look at are measuring tools. So they're the tools you'd probably use first in a job. In the workshop, um, in technology, we use three different types of measuring tools. A vernier cal caliper. That is very accurate and measures to 0 0.1 of a millimetre. A steel ruler. That's pretty accurate. You can measure to about half a millimetre on a steel ruler. And a measuring tape. And that's fairly accurate. You'd measure to about one millimetre accuracy. So they're the three measuring tools you would use in the workshop. The digital vernier caliper. In case you haven't seen one of those, it this part slides open. You put the, whatever you're going to measure in here, in between these jaws. And you can measure internal measurements there, external there. It measures up to about 150 millimetres, but it measures very accurately. So in here, this piece of aluminium is being measured to two decimal places, 33.25, you can see there. Okay, digital vernier caliper. Tools for wood. We're going to look at some hand tools for working with wood. Number one, coping saw. You should know this one. This is used to make curved cuts in thin wood and plastics. You shouldn't really cut steel with or metal with the coping saw, but it's curved cuts, like you can see there. Tenon saw, quite simple, used for making straight cuts in wood and manufactured board. Tri-square, this is used to draw lines at 90 degrees to an edge. So you put the wood, a piece of wood in against the edge here, and you can draw a line there, and it will be exactly 90 degrees. Tri-square, three points, square, 90 degrees there, okay? Bench hook used with a tenon saw, put a piece of wood in, push the put pressure on the wood there. That's what the bench hook's used for, quite simple. Wood vise, fixed to a bench to hold a piece of wood while you're working at them. There's also metal vices, but this one is a wood vise, often has wooden jaws in there to protect the wood. That is called a wood vise. Steel rule, we've looked at a steel rule, but that's used for wood and metal, so it's an important one just to measure. It's normally in centimetres or millimetres. A wood plane, the plane has a blade here, a sharp blade, which is fixed at an angle. When you push it along with both hands, it shaves off a small, you often get wood shavings that curl around here, shaves off thin strips of wood and leaves a smooth finish. Can be also used to shape the edges to put a bevel or an angle or a curve on an edge of a piece of wood. It should always be used along the grain. That's a wood plane. Screwdrivers. Lots of screwdrivers, different sizes of screwdrivers. They can be uh, this plane head or slotted. That's a much more traditional type of screwdriver. And of course, there's posi drive head. This is posi drive head, posi drive, sometimes called cross head, and this can apply a much higher twisting force than a slotted screwdriver without jumping out. Okay, so there's two different types of screwdrivers that you might need to know. Mallet, that's quite simple. What the mallet is used for is using with wood and um, using to hit chisels. It's certainly not for hammering nails because they will just um, dent into the wood here. Okay, that's a mallet. And this one is a pin hammer. The pin hammer is a small lightweight hammer used for um, hitting these things in. These are called panel pins. They're not nails. These are little panel pins and they're used for um, thin wood, attaching pieces of thin wood together, often with glue. Here we've got a marking gauge. Some people have trouble with the marking gauge. The marking gauge here, you've got um, it marks a line parallel to a straight edge. It's good if you need to repeat a measurement. You can set it and then it will mark a line along a ledge here. So here we can see you set the measurement here, so it's set to 10 millimeters, and then as that is moved along the piece of wood, as you can see there, it will leave a line at 10 millimeters in the wood. Wood chisels. These are used with a mallet to remove sections of wood when making joints, for making mortise joints. You should always use um, secure the wood and you should always have a piece of scrap wood underneath so you don't chop into the bench top. That is, they are wood chisels. These tools here, two different types of tools that you may have used or may not have used. 
a rasp and a surform. The rasp is a type of file but very coarse and that's for uh, shaping wood and the surform is a, a metal tool with a perforated blade. They come in a couple of sizes. The blades are quite fragile but again they kind of work like a cheese grater removing wood. Abrasive paper. This isn't called, this stuff's not called sandpaper. Don't write sandpaper in the exam. Call it abrasive paper. It's available in different grades. You start with the coarse grades here and work towards finer grades and to finish your work, to finish off wood. Okay, tools for metal now. We're looking at some metal tools. Here we've got, first of all, hacksaw. Now this is the saw that you use to cut metal. Okay, it's a frame saw. It's got a frame, it's got a blade. It has a hard blade which may snap if you're not careful with it, but this is the one you should use to cut metal and plastics. A scriber. This is used when you're marking metal. You don't use a pencil. You use a scriber. This will mark um, any metal marked steel. It's made of very hard steel, has a sharp point, and will scribe, mark a line, into metal. This is a hammer that you'd use for metal. It's called a ball pain hammer because this end here is a ball shape and it can be used for um, curving and shaping metals and the flat end can be used for hammering, mainly used for hammering metal, but this is a, what you would use as a hammer working with metal. To remove um, material from metal and plastic, we should use files. You can use these on wood, but ideally they're suited for metal and plastic. Um, there's different shapes. The main um, shapes are flat files, um, round files, three square files, and there is a half round file as well. And they are available in different grades, they have different amounts of teeth. The coarser ones again will take off more material, finer ones will leave a finer finish. Center punch. A center punch is used with a ball plane hammer. You the, the pointed end of the center punch is put onto a piece of metal, it's hit squarely with a ballpoint hammer and that leaves a little indentation which then if you need to drill a hole with a pillar drill the drill won't skid about, it will um, center accurately on the punch mark. Okay, That's a center punch. Tin snips, they do what they say, they cut tin, they cut thin steel, um, they leave a sharp edge so if you're using these make sure you use gloves. But for cutting thin steel, much better than using a hacksaw, they cut a, leave a nice clean edge. Now, it's time for questions. And we've got some questions here, so see if you have many of these you can remember. Measuring tools. Now, which measuring tool would you select in the workshop if you had to measure a piece of material that was 2.5 millimeters thick? What tool would you use? you would use a vernier caliper. What tool would you use if you had to measure a piece of material that was 25 millimeters thick? You would use a steel ruler. And last of all, if you had to measure a piece of board that was 2.5 meters long, what tool would you use? A tape measure. Well done if you got those three. Tools for wood. Name three tools that you might use to make this joint. This is a halving joint. What tools might you use to use it? You would use a tri-square to mark out, to mark the lines accurately across. You would use a tenon saw to cut it out. And you would use a chisel to remove the material. Well done if you've got those. What tool is this? This tool is a coping saw. What's this tool used for? It's used to make curve cuts in wood. This tool is a plane. This tool is used to remove small amounts of wood leaving a smooth finish. Name two tools that you might use to mark a line, a straight line, on a piece of aluminium. Two tools you might use. Steel ruler and a scriber.
this tool is. These are metal tools. This tool is a hacksaw. This tool is used to cut metal and plastics. And last of all, these, this tool is a pair of tin snips and it's, you, this tool is used to cut thin sheet metal. Well, I hope you got most of those. That was tools for metal.